what's up guys, Alex here, thank you for checking this video and welcome to another episode about Laravel. This episode is brought to you by SkySilk. If you're looking for a powerful, reliable and affordable VPS in the cloud, SkySilk.com is the answer for you. Look no further for amazing, powerful cloud computing machine starting as low as $1 per month. Click the link in the description below to learn more. Next, us the app.blade.php here and let's edit a bunch of things. So first, we don't need to import the gstatic fonts or the google fonts. We don't want this. The scripts, we can put it at the bottom of our page ba -ba -ba -ba, in the proper footer. So we're not going to slow down the loading of our page. Then let's remove the main div app container that I know why it's there is mostly if we're using some sort of like single page application. If we're using React or Vue.js, we need that div container with the ID, but we're going to build a mostly static. So we don't need the main div container. This nav bar here has all the classes of Bootstrap and it makes sense because by default, Laravel comes with Bootstrap baked in. We don't want to have that. It's going to be completely different. So for now, let's actually comment these out. Boom. Perfect. So if we access our website and see how it looks, it looks pretty ugly still. So the super quick thing that I want to do, I want to align this login form at the center and style it exactly like this example. Look how beautiful it is. So let's do it. Let's open here. Let's access the auth and then the login form is here. We are extending the layout, the section content. We need to change pretty much everything here. And this is going to be a little bit confusing, but we're going to actually rebuild the form. We will learn how the Laravel form it's generated and how it handles all the answers, response and all the error messages and any other aspect of a form submission. So let's comment everything out. Let's comment everything. Let's copy paste everything that we have here. Da, 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 boom. Let's put it in and let's remove the copyright because it's fine. We don't need a copyright and let's remove this section. So if we access our homepage, now we check, we have the style. We need to align it center in order to align it. Since we are using Flexbox, it's really easy to align stuff. So here main, we can use flex and then flex row. Perfect. Here full max width and then MX auto to have it aligned center. And then we can give it a background gray. And let's do actually background gray lighter. Nice. It looks pretty decent, right? So let's apply these classes to our main container. Let's paste it here. Perfect. And then the login, we want to align it center. So MX is the send for margin X. So margin right and left. We're going to set auto and it's going to automatically align it to center. Wonderful. And let's actually put the background color to the actual body, not just the main container. So we're going to avoid these really weird background issues. So if we do this and we go to the body and we generate a class, PG lighter gray. Perfect. Okay. Wonderful. Now let's convert this form that it doesn't do anything. It's pretty useless. It's just a placeholder into the actual Laravel form. And we have everything here that we need to know. So first of all, let's analyze what we have. Let's uncomment this out and let's delete all the HTML that we don't actually need and just leave the actual methods of Laravel. So here we have the container, the row, another div, another div, another div, like all these indented div is just like really terrible. That's why I don't use Bootstrap anymore is mostly just divs inside the divs. We have the form with a post method that is pointing to the route login. And you can see here the double curly brackets. We can use built in methods of Laravel that we are using inside our controllers to point to the route. So here we're specifying the login route, but with a method post. So let's do exactly the same to the other form of our example here form method posts action route. Perfect. Here we have this little thing at CSRF. This is the CSRF token, which is the security token that Laravel uses in order to authenticate, in order to 
confirm that a post request was legitimately generated from within Laravel itself and wasn't coming from outside from an external source or the API call that it's coming to Laravel is authorized with the CSRF token. This token refreshes at every session. So if you lose your session or you're trying to do something, your session is expired, this token will take care of the security aspect of logging in or allowing you to do any HTTP post request or delete request, update request, all this kind of stuff. So we need to incorporate that inside our form and let me show you actually how it looks so let's comment once again this out and right inside the form we can just simply use this directive method csrf if we access our front end we refresh and we open our inspector and let me zoom in the inspector and we check right inside the form look what we have here we have an input field that it's hidden named underscore token, this is the CSRF token, and this is the value. So it doesn't matter if I refresh the page, the value, it's always the same because the session didn't expire. The session has like a couple of hours, it's set, and you can decide how, how much lasts inside your .env file. But until the session is not expired, this token, it's always consistent. And if I submit this form, the token that gets generated in the back end should match and should be identical to the token that we're currently seeing in the front end. If these two tokens don't match, so there's a token mismatch, Laravel will uh, stop, will block the user to do whatever action was doing and will redirect to what we have said before, probably the home page or something else. So this is a really great security feature of Laravel. Let's continue. After the token here, we have a label, form group, we don't need anything. And now we can start dealing with some really important stuff. So here we have the input email. So let's cut all of this and let's paste it inside our, instead of username, let's change this to email and let's change, let's paste our input field here and let's indent it a little bit less, okay. We can apply all the classes that we have from Tailwind inside and replace the form controller. And then we can remove all this stuff, perfect, and update for username should actually be for email, perfect. Okay, here, what is happening? Let's analyze this input field from Laravel. This input field first has a type email, so it respects the HTML file semantic input type. By default is required and has an autofocus. So when the user access the website, automatically the cursor is focused on the input field and also as a couple of extra things. So here in the classes, you can check that if this variable error as an email attribute, we're printing this invalid class. And here, instead of printing this invalid class, let's actually change it to the border red that we have as an example in our Tailwind file. Let's change it here. Otherwise, do we have a border? Yes, border, but there's no color specified. Okay this variable error automatically gets sent back whenever there's a form submission error in Laravel. And it's used also in this case, we have a if condition, if the error has an attribute called email, we're gonna print the message inside the email. And this spam message can be styled the same way that we have here. For example, we can use the paragraph and print it right here, which is perfect. And let's cut this and paste the actual message and we can give it a role of alert if we want and remove these other things. So let's actually trigger an error and let's see how this behaves. So we can comment once again this out. Let's skip it because we didn't finish and let's create a condition here. So let's say if the error variable is defined, let's dd the error variable, and this should be wrapped around double curly brackets. Perfect. And then we can end if this condition. This should be errors, and we should check if count is bigger than zero. We want to print the errors. 
So if we refresh now, we don't have any error. If we try to click sign in, uh, it doesn't work anything. It's actually finished the form submission. Let's trigger the form submission. So here we need a button submit. So we need a button type submit. And if we scroll down, sign in, button type submit. Perfect. Okay, if we refresh this page and we try sign in, this is required. So if I write something, HTML5 preventing me to send it, but in the previous tutorial, I registered with my email. So if I try to log in with an email that doesn't exist and I click sign in, we're DDing the errors. And look what we have here. So we have an error bag object that automatically carries an array of all the errors that we have. And the errors default messages has a password error that it's the password field is required because in our form, we didn't print the password field. Of course, if I go back, I don't see it anymore. But if I remove the if statement, here and I put it these DD out. So I remove these if statement and I'm constantly printing the errors variable, the errors object, the bags is going to be empty. So these errors, it's always constant. It's always present in our views. Automatically Laravel pushes these extra variables in our blade templates that we can use. And this is really useful because automatically we don't have to deal with the shenanigans in our controller. If we have an error, we have to pass back the error message. If we have a missing value, we need to specify which value it is. Automatically Laravel in the authentication workflow takes care of everything. That's phenomenal. Let's continue doing exactly the same, but for our password. So we can scroll down here and change this password, border red, right here and change this to password. And you can see these, these value, these key matches exactly the name of our label, the ID name of our label, name. We don't need a placeholder, I don't want a placeholder. And then we can copy the handling of the error message here for our paragraph. Give it a little room, a little space. And if has error of password, let's print password. Phenomenal. And then if we have a forgot password, same thing that we have here, we want to redirect it to the route password request that it's built in in Laravel authentication, href password request. Fantastic. Now we can delete all this old stuff that we're not using anymore. Or actually we're forgetting the remember me token. So let's copy this input field here and let's paste it. Let's create a div class margin bottom six. And let, let's paste this input remember me with the old checkbox and we can check also the documentation of tailwind if in the form oh send me your newsletter look how nice he's here so i want to do exactly the same label gray font see a bunch of classes here we got the label then we got the input that we can replace completely with this one but we need to change the classes for margin right to and leading tight. Boom. Let's replace this with keeping name. Remember all remember if it's checked, it's perfect. And here the title is remember me and we can remove this label. Perfect. Okay. Now we got the entire form respecting what Laravel is expecting from us. So if we try to submit it, we can't. If we pass a weird email and a password and we say, hey, remember me, sign in. Look what we have here. The error automatically gets handled by ourselves because Laravel recognizes that this email doesn't match anything inside the database. So we are having an email issue and we are highlighting the thing. And also you notice that we did a form request. We came back because there's a redirect back and our email address is still there wasn't erased. And this is happening because of the old value. So automatically also Laravel pushes back in our form whenever there's a form request and then there's a redirect back 
pushes these old variables, all the variables that were coming from an input field that was part of an HTTP request will be available with the old directive, with this old method that we can automatically print. And this old method is pretty smart because of course, if we uh, refresh the page, we never actually did uh, form submit. This is completely new. So we don't have the old value of that email stuff. But if as we did before, we try to submit it, what is happening here, the form gets submitted to the controller. The controller has an error, redirect back to the form and automatically Laravel handles with the blade template, the error message, handles the old value of the input field that we don't want to erase and that's perfect and it happens also works for so for the remember me if we get back the email it's fine the password field is required so we have an error fantastic everything is working and if we click on forgot password we get redirected to the super ugly thing so why don't you do that now why don't you style the rest of the page or like the rest of the auth if we go to the register we're gonna have access to the register method. Why don't you access the Tailwind documentation and check some example and you style your forms and your auth workflow with the front end the way you want. It's gonna be pretty interesting learning all these nice little tricks and getting the hang of these utility first framework, which is really, really powerful and really great to work with. So that's pretty much it for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And until the next one, as usual, happy coding.